Greetings. The topic of this episode is baptism according to as it is written. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. We're like little kids just playing in a crib. We seem to be something in each other's eyes, but nothing in his. Vanity will be the very death of many men. Such a tragic way to go, but sin is sin. Everybody's held accountable for every action. How will you sum up your life when he asks you? Did you do anything worthy to be kept alive? Or were you just a simpleton with no respect for life? Time is friends with nobody, always on the move, always moving forward, undefeated, never ever lose. Yet it's treated like an unappreciated man or woman doing all they can just to keep from seeing empty stomachs. We're like emotions, hit her date and gone tomorrow. Swift judgment by the king quickly follows. What did you do? The question's coming very soon. Let's do what's right while still under the blue. This whole time he's been so kind. Every bit of praise to the most high. He sees everything with a close eye. His time to arrive is so nigh. We're like a body made of stars. Little children are all we are The brain wasted is such a sad sight to see Every day I see one thrown down the trash People with potential, but actions detrimental to their temples Keeps them acting like a fool with no senses Talent lies beneath the surfaces of many It's like a prisoner screaming to be let free But all the bad choices that are made just simply Conceals it, tucked away like a diary Damn. Such a pity, but it's free will Nothing to dispute, much like a plea deal You receive what you receive when the routes you decide to take Steers you wrong much further away from what y'all already got planned Since the one he knew you before you could stand But strand after strand, how can you understand If rolling up's the only damn that you give He's been so kind, every bit of praise to the most high. He sees everything with a close eye. His time to arrive is so nigh. We're like a body made of stars. Little children are all we are. The topic that we want to look at in the Bible today is baptism, because a lot of people think um, that they can be fire baptized through trials or water baptized um, in a ritual, and that's going to take care of everything uh, for them according to the teaching of men. but. Let's just look at what the Bible says about baptism and um, what it's connected to and stuff, just, just briefly, because um, we want to check uh, what, what it is according to as it is written so that we know whether what we're doing are, is right or wrong and adjust ourselves if necessary. First, I want to go to Acts chapter 2 and start at verse 36. Now, Peter had went over, uh, well, and the other apostles as well, um, went over a litany of scriptures, Joel 2, Psalm 16, Deuteronomy 18, um, 2 Samuel 7, and Psalms uh, 16, uh, and explaining to, the, to these uh, people that accused the uh, people prophesying about Christ in another in um, other people's native tongue at the Pentecost. Uh, uh, you know, they had accused them of being drunk. So he's like, no, they're just explaining to these people that may not understand the language we speak about Christ. You know, so that's the language that they hear. And it's not babbling. It's them speaking the tongue that these other people were born in so that they can understand the goodness and mercy of the Most High through Christ. So at the end of it is where we're going to pick up. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. This is the end of his speaking. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly 
that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So he was explaining to them according to as it is written in the Old Testament and the scriptures that they had at that time. According to the understanding that they had that this Jesus who had just been crucified was the Lord and Christ that had been prophesied and that we he is the one that we should look to now. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? So they knew they had messed up. They said, like, oh man, we were just, you know, taking part, uh, taking part in and celebrating this man's death. And we thought we had done a good thing according to what we had been taught. What can we do now? Verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, a couple things here. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. So the baptism is now in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So there's the repentance and the being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and receiving the Holy Ghost. First, I want to deal with the Holy Ghost because a lot of people through um, a misunderstanding of the first part of Acts 2 uh, think that the Holy Ghost is some um, overwhelming spirit that comes on you and causes you to speak in unknown tongues where you're communicating only between you and God um, or, or or where you uh, dance controllably or uncontrollably or do things that um, if they were done outside of a of church building would be considered mental illness or, or Tourette's, a very bad Tourette syndrome. Um, that's not the case. Let's look at, um, just dealing with that right quick, let's look at John chapter 14 and verse 26. And this was Christ talking to the apostles um, before he was to be put to death. Okay? John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the gift of the Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit, is... To, is to be taught all things and remember all things whatsoever Christ had been teaching us. Because as the scriptures uh, will bring out, if we have time, he is that perfect example who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. So he came and lived that example so that all of the things that he did, if we followed them, we would actually be moving according to the Holy Spirit and we would it would tie into the repentance and the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. The scriptures are going to bring that out. So it's a teaching, a learning rather, and an, getting an understanding of what the scriptures mean and bringing all things into remembrance about Christ. It's not dancing, it's not talking, it's not acting like you in the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Right out of Christ's own mouth, whom a lot of people think that they follow when they actually follow men. Now, we do know in uh, Matthew 26 and 30, I'm going to get that right quick, as a side note, and I believe it's in Mark as well, uh, Matthew 26 verse 30 says, and when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So, 
they did sing a hymn, but the hymn is actually a psalm. So they went out and sung a psalm. So it's not the uh, hippity hoppity, corrupted, uh, sometimes perverted style of the singing that we do or that uh, record or music companies produce for us and call it gospel music. If we go to Psalms 119, we can easily see very quickly in verses 54 to 56, David said, Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. So it was all centered around, whatever song it was, it was centered around obeying the Lord according to as it is written. So, we get from the scriptures that the Holy Spirit is going to teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance what Christ has said unto us. That's John 14, 26, right out of Christ's own mouth. So now, going back to Acts 2, 36, I mean 2, 38, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. So the being baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that's the baptism now. And it's not dunking in a cleaning solution, chlorinated water, or a pool of water, or going out and finding some river or shoreline or whatever, wherever in the world, and dunking people in that water and saying, Jesus Christ. That's not it. Let's look at Mark chapter 1, because this brings out an understanding about baptism as well. Mark 1, let's read verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So wait a minute. So, wait a minute. Let's just read that again. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. So, was he saying, okay, listen, now that you've listened to what I've just had to say, I'm going to dunk you in this water, and you're going to be acceptable in the Lord. You don't really have to do anything. Is that what that's saying? Let's read verse 5. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. So, that confessing of sins, does that mean they had a booth there that, you know, they, uh, well, I guess they would go one at a time in the booth. John was in one side of the booth, and they went in the other side of the booth, and there was a little screen there. And when they came in the other side, he would open the screen and say, um, you know, tell me, um, tell me what's wrong and what have you done, my son? And they would one at a time come in there and say, listen, this is what I've done wrong. And he'd say, okay, say three Hail Marys or, you know, um, put $10 in the pot on the, on the way out. Or, oh, wait a minute, dude. Oh, that's bad. Put 500 in there. And then when everybody got through, they went out, stood in the water, and he baptized them one by one. What is that what that means? Let's go to Ezra, the book of Ezra, because the understanding of confession, according to as it is written, is written. <laughs> the Bible defines its own terms. And when we let men define the terms of the Bible and the phrases of the Bible without using the Bible, that's where we start to go off. Let's go to Ezra 10. I want to read verses 10 through 12. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, 
Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel, because it was in the law that they were not supposed to marry outside of their nation, even outside of their, of their tribe. Verse 11. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Like in, I think it's Deuteronomy 7, it was said, don't marry people of another nation because they're going to draw your, you or your sons or your daughters off into other gods and they won't want to serve me and then their children won't want to serve me. You are supposed to marry within yourselves so that you have that understanding of how to do my pleasure, saith the Lord. I'm going to read verse 11 again. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Verse 12. Then all the congregation answered, and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. Okay. So there is actually an action involved. Meaning, okay, I found out this is wrong according to what repentance is. And I'm going to even get this out of my mind. And I'm not going to do it anymore. This action here, this activity here, I can't do that anymore. Because it is not the Lord God of my Father's pleasure that I do this. So back in Mark 1, verse 5, when it says, And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. That means they were saying, listen, this is what I've been doing, and I'm not going to do it anymore. Starting from right now, I'm going to fight this urge to do this. I'm going to fight this urge to even think that way about my brother, to have that hatred, or to have any of the other lusts or desires or covetousness that the Lord hates. That's what was going on. I think it's, uh, where did, what is it? Proverbs 28, verse 30. There's another scripture about that. 13, I believe. Proverbs 28, 13. Here it is. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So there it is. But just so the point can be driven home, not from me, but because of the scriptures, let's read Mark chapter 1, verse 7. And he preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me. Talking about Christ the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Verse 8, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, rather. So, what is the baptism of Christ? As they went from John the Baptist to Christ, that water baptism was ending. Christ was going to baptize them with the teaching and the remembering of all the things that he had said unto them, which was that perfect example. And here it is in uh, 1 Peter 3. Excuse me. 1 Peter 2. Let me start at 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. So, the thing is, Christ came to teach us how to get right with the Father, 
so that we can have that understanding, that Holy Spirit, that holy mindset to do the Lord's pleasure so that when we confess and forsake our sins, we could have mercy from the Lord instead of keep on doing the same thing and have judgment from the Lord. So that's what, it, that's what it's all about. That is the baptism that's coming from the Lord. Here's something that Christ came to teach us so that we can have that remission of sins and that mercy. The baptism now is in our minds so that we don't go and do the same things we used to when we were being worldly. We have a holy mindset, a holy uh, spirit on us. Ephesians 4, 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So that's the defiled, the corrupt old man. Where we just did things according to what we like. Forget about what the Lord likes. I'm going to do what I like. Because I basically am my own God. I see that over there. I want it. I'm going to go take it. But yo, bro, the Lord said that's stealing. I don't care. That's wrong. That's wrong. But that's something that we can't do anymore. So we have to put that away. I'm going to read verse 20, verses 21 and 22 again. Ephesians 4, 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So he came bringing that true doctrine, right? And if we are learning from him and bringing, being able to bring all things that he taught us into remembrance, we have that Holy Spirit, right? That's what he said in John 14, 26, verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So we have to put that lustful spirit out and bring in a spirit of Christ who did the Lord's pleasure. He did no sin. No guile found in his mouth, right? Verse 24, And that ye put on that new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So we know the righteousness is the faith of Christ. However, that faith was defined in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 25, where it said, Obey the Lord as he commanded. And then also it says, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So that holiness that we have to have, it all goes back to keeping the commandments of God. When we flush that old man out of our mind and bring in a new man which is not corrupt, according to this, the deceitful lust, understands what the lusts are, and how they come and is able to repel that thought to be able to keep from going into them. And then further so far into the thought that they turn into a deceitful, lustful action. That is holiness. And holy is also defined in the Bible. Okay, Numbers 15 and verse 40. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. So if we remember everything that Christ taught us, right? We have that Holy Spirit. But if we're being holy, 
we're remembering and doing the commandments. That's the baptism of the scriptures because we have to remember, excuse me, that's the baptism now in Christ because we have to remember just like when the Israelites crossed from Egypt through the Red Sea into Arabia, they did not get wet. The sole of their feet did not get wet. They crossed on dry land. And that transition was like a baptism to them because they were supposed to start learning how to please God instead of pleasing the gods of Egypt and the men that profited off of them by the oppression that they did. That was symbolic of the baptism that we have to do now. 1 Corinthians 10 brings that out. We have to take and put off that old, lustful, satanic mindset and renew our mindset with one that is obedient to Christ. Matter of fact, I think I have a couple seconds left. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians um, 10, 1-4 through 4, right now. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, but they didn't get wet. Just like we don't have to get wet to change our mindset. 1 Peter 3.21 The like figure unto, even baptism, doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, the rinsing or washing of the body, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. With that, have a blessed day. Peace. Messiah with my feet tired. Where is words in my heart, not on my attire? This real cold bundle love, boy, you might expire. Learned how to trust in Elohim with my vision cloudy. I know he got me, waking heavy, he spot me. Give me strength and endurance, his word be my assurance. Don't stop walking, keep your head up, I. It might get tough, but be strong, never give up, I. We at the end, it's war time till the day is stopped. Draw your sword for the battle, can't have no souls lost. Look, we gon' keep the faith, he gon' go before us. I pray he order our steps so we can stay the course. Yeah. Hold on, because there's a love for you and a love for me Hold on, be strong, it's close to be, oh yes indeed This world's cold and it's cursed, ain't no fixing that This world's so for the gold, I ain't feeling that 
I'd rather wait on Elohim or Kim or Kings who fills my life with better things.